Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a blimp envelope. So, this method that we're going to use today is very easy, reasonably fast, anybody can do it, uh, and I've specifically designed this method to work with very inexpensive materials. So we're going to be using emergency blankets in order to uh, make our envelope. This is made out of one half mil uh, mylar. Um, it's reasonably strong. Uh, it does have to be glued in place. Uh, you cannot heat seal it, or more accurately, a heat seal will not be gas tight. Anyway, let's move on. All right, let's go through all of the ingredients we're going to need to make this blimp. <clears throat> First off, we're going to be gluing it using contact cement. Uh, this stuff you can buy at any store. Like I say, I wanted this to be something that would be cheap and easy for people to do. So I just got generic contact cement from my local Walmart. And that's, that's what this is. Um, now if you want a good quality blimp, you are going to want to thin this material out. Now you can use the expensive thinner that's hard to find, that's actually manufactured by Wellwood. Um, or if you're using a different brand of contact cement, you can use the thinner that they provide, uh, which is again, expensive and hard to find. But like I say, this is supposed to be beginner level entry, you know, so that anybody in the world can sit down and make themselves a blimp. So instead we're going to be using lighter fluid. Lighter fluid can work with most contact cements. I say most, there's probably some that it doesn't work with. Uh, from w the research I've done, that seems to be the case. But most uh, contact cements can be thinned with lighter fluid. I hope I don't have to point out lighter fluid is flammable or inflammable, whatever. Um, so be careful, you know, uh, use this in a ventilated area and uh, uh, be very careful about uh, fire hazards. Um, another thing about thinning using uh, lighter fluid, it makes the dry time much longer which can be both a blessing and a curse. Uh, so w if you are thinning with lighter fluid, you're gonna wanna give a good 10, maybe even 15 minutes between applications of glue to allow it to dry before you uh, attempt to seal it. All right, I wanted to show you this stuff. This is good stuff. Um, this is, I, I'm not gonna use this today. I did wanna show it to you because if you live in a part of the world where UHU contact sticks are available, then use them. At least for your first few envelopes. They are very, it's very easy to apply. It's just a stick, you know, you rub it on, it's, it's really easy. Now the downside of this is you can't thin it. So for the best quality seal, um, that is to say the lightest weight possible, you actually don't want to use this. You want to use contact cement that has been thinned. <clears throat> All right, tape, we might not even use this. I don't know, it, it depends on how things work out and how, how much I need to flatten the material. Um, but we might use this to flatten the material. Back over here for a second. This stuff, the thicker tape, th you can use any thick tape. I like this stuff because it's transparent and uh, I do work with transparent envelopes sometimes. The only reason you need this is for the fill valve. We won't be using this on the envelope to, to seal the seams. Instead, we will use this for the fill valve. It just provides an interface between the fill valve and the uh, envelope that's a little stronger because you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be tugging on that while you're filling the blimp. Uh, this, we're just gonna use to draw some lines. Um, oh yeah, and as I mentioned, you could use duct tape. You could use, there's a lot of things you could use. Uh, any thick tape that's gonna stick to your envelope. Okay, this we're going to use uh, only on the fill valve. Uh, you want any kind of flexible glue will work. You can use a glue gun. I don't like to use a glue gun because they don't tolerate temperature changes very well. And if you're going to be using your blimp outdoors, that may be a big deal. Uh, so this is just a plasticized epoxy. It, it works, you know, uh, and we're not going to use very much of it. So one, one tube will go a long way. So you're not going to spend a lot of money on that. <clears throat> Scissors. Um, we're probably going to only use this on the fill valve. We do not use scissors to cut the envelope. Uh, what we use to cut the envelope is soldering iron. So we will uh, cut it using heat. <clears throat> and we do that for a couple reasons. First off, really thin materials like this mylar, they tear very easily. So you gotta be real careful not to tear it. And with the scissors, that's a real danger. Uh, with the soldering iron, that's less likely to happen. 
The other reason we use a soldering iron is because it's going to fuse the uh, strips of material together, which kind of holds them in place while we're doing our gluing. Um, and it just, it, it weakly fuses them together. It's not a strong uh, connection, but yeah, so that's useful for when you're gluing. And then uh, this, we actually use the back of this blade more often than the front. This is just a tool mostly for separating the envelopes. So you're gonna get into the envelope and kind of go like this to, and then pry up the pattern. I'll, I'll show you that later. All right, this syringe. We're going to be building the fill valve out of this syringe. So we cut we cut some pieces here and, and that's, that's what we make our fill valve with. You can get this at any pharmacy. Um, this is a one milliliter uh, syringe. The nice thing about using this for your fill valve is it works with like a, a, a compressed gas, you know, like a helium tank um, spout. And then you can also just fill it using your breath. You can fill it using air pumps, uh, like a mattress pump. Um, it is recommended not to breathe into an a envelope because that gets moisture in there. Nonetheless, I'm going to be doing that today just because my air pump is, is not available right now. And I just, uh, when I finish it, I just want to show you what it looks like inflated and I'll probably never use it again. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'm just going to use uh, uh, my breath for that. All right, <clears throat> a few more things. This applies the glue, you know, simple. It's just a, any kind of paintbrush will work. Just uh, you're not going to be able to use the paintbrush for anything else once you've used it with this glue. What else have we got here? Okay, we just use this for a pattern. That's all it is. So when we make the uh, fill spout, uh, or the fill valve rather, um, we're gonna use this to, to draw a pattern of a circle. You can use anything. Anything that's round, you can use for your circle. I'm gonna use this. Uh, and then finally, the pattern. So I've cut out a gore pattern. Um, to, to create your gore pattern, you're going to use a spreadsheet uh, that I will have linked in the description of the video. Uh, the spreadsheet um, originally created by Johannes Ising. Um, and uh, I've modified a little bit, added a few extra tools that you might find useful, uh, added some things that beginners might want, like uh, specific weights for specific materials, um, so that you can calculate how much your blimp will lift and, and things like that. Um, I believe that's everything. Hopefully I have not missed anything. Uh, you can put any questions in the, in the comments. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is show you the theory of the uh, seams that we will be creating. All right, so let me show you how this works. So we start with the pattern like this. We open it up like that. And on the real one, you'd have to come through here and you'd have to separate the lightly fused material and open it up. And then you're going to apply the contact cement. And I'm just gonna put a little bit right here on this side. And obviously you're gonna get some of this contact cement onto whatever surface you're building on. So you'll want to cover your table in uh, build paper uh, like I've done here, or just use a table you don't care very much about, <clears throat> or both. And, uh, and that's, and the first seal that we're making is simply a uh, gas tight seal. Now I've actually used more glue here than I would typically recommend. If this was a full seam, I would now spend some time spreading this out, you know, uh, so that it's not so thick. Um, and also now that it's applied, I would typically go glue the rest of it so that I have less downtime while I'm waiting for this to dry. But in this situation, we can't do that. Um, so I'm gonna just say a few more things uh, before we uh, uh, pause to allow the glue to dry. Um, so what we're making here, we make two different seals. The first one is gas tight. That's what I just did. And then we're going to sandwich this back down. Um, <clears throat> and then, we come through and make a second seal, that, which is load bearing. So the gas tight seal, if this was dry and I just, you know, put it back together, it would be pretty weak. You could easily peel back the sides. It would not resist peeling very strongly at all. But what is stronger is anytime you're making a connection with this glue like this. So 
Now, if you pull this way, it will not come off, and the material will break before this seam uh, gives way. So that's what we want. So you, you, you start with the, uh, the gas tight seam, and then you bend this over so that it's uh, um, on the other side. You'll see, you'll see what I mean. Um, but there is a, an alternative way of doing this. There's another method that is popular in the airship building community, which I call the Gore Tool method. And that's where you create this elaborate tool and you take every one of your seams and you stretch it over this Gore Tool. And I've done it, you know, it can be done. It's, but it's, number one, I don't think it's good for beginners. It is difficult, very difficult, and it is prone to leaks, or at least when you're beginning, it's probably going to leak because you have to stretch the material over it and you have to do it just right and you have to be careful not to tear it and there's you know it's it's really complicated and particularly when it comes to curved surfaces so that's why you know in my test here we've got a curved seam because so will your blimp you know your blimp has a naturally curved surface to it that's what makes it go nice and fast and it just, it doesn't work very well with curves. Like I say, it can be done, I've done it, but this is a much simpler method and it will, it'll get the job done and you will not have leaks at the seam. Now this material, this, this uh, emergency blanket stuff, it's got all these folds in it. See all these folds? Those folds will sometimes leak. So in general, when I'm building an envelope out of emergency blanket material, that's where the leaks will be. Not at the seams, the seams are fine. It will be in these folds here. And sometimes when you're working with the emergency blanket material, there will be defects at the factory causing really sharp folds where something has smashed the material down. That's no good at all. You gotta avoid those sections if you're building a blimp envelope that you care about. Now the envelope I'm making today, I don't care about. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I'm going to use the material uh, as it comes out of the box. But what you'll want to do is you will want to uh, look at the material and use the parts of the emergency blanket material that are really good quality and don't have any extra folds. You already have these folds, nothing you can do about that. But all of the extra folds, avoid those because they tend to be even worse. Um, all right, I think that's about it. So I'm going to uh, turn this off for a while and we'll just, so I'm going to give this 10 minutes and then we're going to come back and then we're going to uh, proceed to the next step. All right, you may uh, notice I've taped this down. That's not going to be necessary when we do the actual envelope because the, the envelope itself, the bottom layers will uh, hold it together for us, but it is necessary here. So all right, that's, that's about long enough, at least for this trial envelope. So I'm just going to take this side. Now here's where you want to be careful. Um, when you line these two sides up, just make sure that they're lining up properly. Uh, you want it to be as close as possible, and you want there to be as few wrinkles as possible. Your enemy, when you are trying to make the gas tight seal, is wrinkles. Wrinkles will mess that up. So, And some wrinkles are unavoidable. I don't know if it'll come out in the camera, but you can, there's a little wrinkle here, there's a couple small wrinkles over here. Some of that is unavoidable. Uh, and, but you don't want to have too much of it or your gas tight seal will leak. So that's no good. All right, so that's the first seal. Um, now you're going to go back through and you are going to apply a somewhat thicker or wider, not thicker, but wider uh, spread of glue here for your second seal, which is your load bearing seal. All right, so I'm gonna let that uh, sit for a while and then we're going to, um, I'll show you how, that, how to put that together. All right, that should be long enough. So now all I have to do is take this and bend it or fold it, I should say, back onto itself. Now, uh, of course, when we're working with an envelope, we will be following the pattern from the gore pattern. But in this case, I'm just going to roughly follow this uh, curve. Now, you may have noticed that this bit, let me do it again. So right here, if I try to close this, it's going to just naturally fold. Why? Because 
there's a curve here, and so it doesn't line up perfectly. And that's fine. For the load-bearing seam, it's perfectly fine to have folds in there. It's not going to cause any problems. So that's why this particular method is so much easier and is less likely to have leaks, because the load-bearing, let's see, the load-bearing seam is the only one that's going to have uh, folds, at least significant folds, and it doesn't need to be gas tight because you have a separate gas tight seam. All right, that should do it. Now I will uh, let that sit for just a few minutes. Okay, I think that's probably good enough. So let me show you one more thing. <clears throat> so when I made this seam, I intentionally used too much glue on the inside. Another thing that makes this particular technique really easy is that it doesn't actually matter if you use, or it doesn't matter very much if you use too much glue. Because, remember when I was saying that when you're peeling it like this, it's a very weak connection. So right here, I can simply pull on this until the material is flush with that seam. So you can see like, see right here, that seam is now pretty clean. You know, it's, it's, it's exactly where I wanted the seam to be. It's exactly where I made this fold. Um, so yeah, so it works pretty well. And again, I'm just going to go in here and spread this out so that the extra glue is uh, spread. And what's going to happen, by the way, is over time, that glue is going to simply lose its tackiness. Now, you don't want to have extra glue if you can avoid it because it adds extra weight and it serves no purpose. So, you know, don't have, let's see, try to limit your, your glue, but still, if you do have too much, it's not that big of a deal. All right, and then just to show you that, yes, you know, this is really strong, I can't break it. Uh, okay, let me, let, me, uh, let me try a little harder here. I, there we go. So it finally broke, but you can see, did it break at the seam? No, it broke in the material. That's what you want. You make your seam so strong that the, the, the material breaks before the seam does. So this is a good seam. All right, now let me show you the actual build process. For the rest of the video, uh, I'm gonna have the camera up on the ceiling so you can see the entire build table and you can see what I'm doing. Okay, on with the actual build. So first thing I'm gonna make is the fill valve. So we take the syringe apart like this, and now we want to cut it here and cut it close to the, uh, to the end and then cut it, cut it close to the other end. The point is to shorten the uh, plunger. All right, and then I'm gonna cut off this extra little rubber bit. Some syringes have them, some syringes don't. Not sure why, well, it's probably to make sure the syringe is completely empty. Anyway, it doesn't matter, moving on. So uh, yeah, there you go, and then I will cut this as well. I will cut it right here. You want to have a little bit left over because some of it is going to go inside of the envelope and then the rest is going to stick out on the outside, giving you a easy place to hold the blimp while you're inflating it. Because that's important, otherwise you can tear the envelope. Ah, come on. Especially since you're handling the, the let's see, you're handling the envelope near where you fill it very frequently. And so you don't want to, you know, you don't want to tear that. Okay, so now we're going to fuse these two bits together. And I'm going to put down a little bit of tape just to hold it in place while I am fusing it. Okay. And then we just get in here and kind of melt this a little bit. Move some of these other things out of the way. Melt both sides. And of course we are mel melting plastic here, so you're gonna wanna do this in a ventilated area. We should be doing all this work in a ventilated area. Okay, that's not my cleanest job ever. Uh, in fact, yeah, that's... Well, it is strong though. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna smooth that out <clears throat> with a soldering iron, just kinda go back and forth, preferably without melting the soldering iron's cord. Just kinda smooth this out. Okay, 
and I'm not sure if I've pointed this out yet, but uh, obviously this soldering iron is never going to be used for solder ever again, or and in fact that one never has been. So you want to just go buy the cheapest soldering iron you can because you're going to ruin it. Um, okay, yeah. Anyway, that'll do. That's good enough. <laughs> good enough for a demonstration. Um, and then the the fill valve mechanism is really simple. You know, you just put that in. Now it's sealed. Take it out. Now you can inflate it. Very very simple. All right, now we want to prepare for attaching this to the envelope. Uh, so let me put this in a slightly safer place. Uh, and then we're going to take this and we're going to take our tape. And it's pretty easy. We're just going to cut off a bit here. And again, the only purpose of the tape is to seal or provide an interface between the uh, fill valve and the envelope uh, so that it's a little stronger in that area because you're going to be handling it frequently. And I'm just going to draw a little circle here. Very, very simple. Oh, wow, that is really messy. Okay. Eh. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut out that little circle. So uh, you'll probably want to use a thinner uh, permanent ink pen than what I've got here. Uh, and in fact, yeah. just make your job a little easier. So you want to have a fat pen for drawing on the envelope so that you can see it more easily. But you probably want a thin pen for the rest. Oh, hey, okay, yes. When I was showing you the uh, tools we were going to use on our build, I forgot to show you the most important one. And that is the can. So you can use this as a weight. You can use this, as I'm using it here, as a way to hold this in place while I'm going to be putting a hole through it. And you can even drink it if, you know, you need a little caffeine to stay awake or something like that. All right, so all I'm going to do is put a hole in this. I will go down and I'll kind of wiggle around a little bit until it is the appropriate width. You want it to be a little thinner than the uh, the actual fill valve so that it has to stretch like that. Perfect. And determining the correct width, it just takes practice. It's just something you have to kind of get used to. All right. Now, we're going to take the leftovers of the plunger. We're going to take this and throw it out. And now we're going to take some of our plasticized epoxy and I'm going to put just a little bit of it right here. So in order to make sure that the connection to the fill valve is good and gas tight, plus to make sure that it doesn't slip off of the envelope, we use, we put uh, this stuff on both sides of the seam. So right now it's not, you know, our envelope is not ready, so obviously we can't put glue on the back side of, or the inside of the envelope. But we can put glue on this side, and we will do so. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, in order to make sure that you've got a good, strong connection to the fill valve, because you don't want this to break later, it's very frustrating. Uh, let me take that off. Put that back over here. Score the... Uh, the surface here a little bit, just you know, put a little, put some cuts here. I'm not cutting deeply. I'm not cutting through the plastic. I'm just putting rough marks all over this. And the reason you do that is because it gives the glue a surface to dig into, making it stronger. And I'll do some lengthwise as well. 
preferably without cutting my finger off, because, you know, that's no good. Okay, just a few more. Okay, I'm just feeling it with my fingers and noting that, yeah, it feels pretty rough in there now. It was perfectly smooth when I started. And the glue, I mean, the glue will kind of work even without scoring, but it doesn't work great. So that's why I like to do that. All right, great. All right. Now, this stuff uh, dries in about 15 minutes, but we're not going to wait for it. So now you just kind of carefully apply this all around here. And it is, a, you want, you have to strike a balance between how much extra weight you're adding and how good of a seal it is. It's just a little bit of a balancing act. Try to get it right next to the actual, um, hole. Okay. That looks relatively good. Now, I'm just going to hold this up just in case you can't see. I just want to show you that I've got a little space between the end of the plunger and the, uh, the tape that's going to interface with the envelope. And uh, we want to have that space there again so that we have somewhere to hold when we're filling it. Um, and then there's a, a smaller portion on the inside of the envelope. In fact, this is probably a bit too much. I'm just going to... Move this just a bit closer, okay, because we don't really need much space on the inside of the envelope, and having too much is just a waste. So, All right, there we go. So now I will set this to the side and let it uh, harden whilst we work on the rest of the envelope. All right, so for my next step, I'm going to be cutting four strips of my envelope material, and I'm going to be cutting it the width of this gore, or I mean, well, a bit more because you've got to have a little extra for the seam. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that one of the folds in the material, one of these folds, is right down the middle of the gore. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be turning on some entertainment here. Uh, in my opinion, you should, you should have something to distract yourself, you know, while you're working on the blimp or you'll go crazy eventually. Uh, so I'm going to watch a little uh, Infinity War while I'm building this one. All right, all right, so we've got our various uh, strips of material ready to go. Now we stack them. So the uh, trick with this technique, um, I like to call it the accordion technique, because when you're done, the envelope is going to unfold like an accordion when you inflate it. So the basic pattern is pretty simple. You got a flat piece on the bottom, and then a folded piece here, another folded piece on the other side, so like folded piece, folded piece, and then uh, on top, another flat piece, which kind of sandwiches the, uh, the, the inner gores. And, and yeah, and that way that when you inflate it, the, the folds kind of go out and uh, form the sides of the uh, blimp. That's how it works. So I'm just going to fold these in half, like so. 
And so we're taking advantage of these folds that already exist in this material. You might as well. If they're going to cause you a whole lot of trouble. They might as well make your job a little easier too. Um, <clears throat> and uh, if you were using a different type of material that didn't already have the folds, uh, maybe some uh, polyurethane, maybe some, uh, you know, some uh, Tedlar or something, <clears throat> you'd have to you'd have to create this fold, obviously, right? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna lay this down, and I'm gonna put another one on top of it. And I'm also going to tape them together because it's really important that the middle seam lines up across the whole length of the ship. So I'm just going to put, I'll usually do like a piece of tape in the middle, a piece of tape on the end, and then a piece of tape in the, in a, at a quarter. I guess that's a quarter of the way down. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, and that just kind of holds it together. And then when later on in the process, when you're doing the gluing, you have to remember to remove that tape from the inside, or you'll be very upset when you try to inflate it, and it doesn't inflate because you forgot to remove the tape. Uh, so that's about it. I'm going to go forward to that point, um, and then I'll uh, tell you about the next steps. All right, now we're finally ready. So, <clears throat> next step, put the gore on top of the material. And we are going to trace a line around the gore pattern. And try and get this as flat as possible. Okay. So, yeah. We'll uh, trace a line around the gore with a pen, <clears throat> uh, and then we will cut out uh, around that line, leaving a little bit of space for the seam. I'll use a relatively wide seam today, uh, because if you're starting out, that's probably what you'll want to do as well. All right, I will proceed to that point. All right, that's got that complete. Now, let's lift this for just a moment. Now, hopefully this comes away cleanly. It's typical for it to stick to the table a little bit. You gotta be careful not to let it tear. Now, so while, while I was lifting this, it did start to tear and that'll happen. And you just gotta kinda work your way around it. There we go. 
why don't I pull the rest of the way, uh, the rest of the borders off from this side. I'm going to flip this over. Put my gore pattern back down. <coughs> and I'm going to trace out the gore pattern on this side. Try to get it to line up as close as possible to where it was on the other side. So that you have nice, good, clean lines when you inflate your envelope. about right. That looks about right as well. Okay, and now I'm just going to trace it out on this side. Just at the borders. I'm sorry, not at the borders, just right here in the middle. Um, let's do that real quick and then we'll talk about what comes next. Right. Is that about the middle? No, more or less. What about here? tell you what we're going to do here. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I peel back the top layer and I lay it back, uh, I lay it down over here and then I'm going to glue on the inside of the area I just opened up. I'm also going to remove these pieces of tape and then I'm going to lay it back down, make being careful to make sure that the borders are as lined up as I can get them. Now a few small wrinkles, that's no big deal, but just try to keep from having any big wrinkles. And then I'll open this side up, lay it down over here, glue all the way across, and then I'll lay it back down. And then I'll flip this thing over and do it all over again. Okay, that's the basic process. That's what creates your gas tight seal. But before I do any of that, I need to put in the fill valve. You wanna do that now, because it'll be a lot harder later on. <clears throat> so I've got to peel this back, which I guess that means I might as well start with this side, huh? Yeah, anyway. I like to put the fill valve in the back because the airflow is slower in the back and so the, um, the fill valve will create less drag back there. <clears throat> Plus it's, uh, let me see, it, it also makes it a little easier to drain uh, when, when, you're, when you need to drain your envelope, you just hold down, you have something hold down the nose and then the tail goes up in the air and you let it drain that way. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to get to that. Uh, and uh, again, I'll, I'll turn my uh, show back on, uh, watch some more Avengers, and, um, and you'll just uh, see this on Fast Forward.
All right. Uh, I'm just going to take a, a little break right now. <clears throat> uh, i got to wait for this to glue. Uh, I'm sorry, for it to harden uh, before I can proceed with the build. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to turn this off and uh, we'll come back and uh, give it 15 minutes.
right. <clears throat> so we finished making our gas tight seal. <clears throat> And we are ready to make the load bearing seal. Before I do that, I'm just going to take a look at a few things here. Make sure that these are reasonably tight. And I also need to separate the two halves. Huh. There you go. So I just need to find a. So I'm finding a part of the envelope where there's a, a hole between the gap, uh, a gap between the layers of the envelope. And then I will use that. And often a little bit of glue finds its way between the um, folds of the, in the envelope. And so you gotta kind of pry it apart a little bit. And sometimes it'll start to tear, which is what it's doing right here. And I don't want it to tear, so I'm gonna get in there with a knife and kind of move my way, work my way around the tear. That's it, and you just, you know, just go down the whole length of the envelope, making sure it's safely separated. in terms of the actual build of it. Um, now I'm going to apply glue here uh, along each of the seams all the way around and then I will, after the glue has dried, I will fold it up like so all the way around and I fold right on this line that uh, hopefully I made thick enough to see on the camera. Um, all right, and I'm just gonna turn my uh, uh, movie back on and uh,
Alright, so the build is complete. Uh, I would now like to inflate it for the first time, make sure that goes okay. Um, just two quick uh, kind of pro tips. Um, so I made these seams wider than I normally do so that you could see it on the camera and also because when you make your first envelope you will probably also want to make pretty wide seams. Um, so, but uh, you know, as you get experience, you want to make those seams smaller so that it's lighter. Also, uh, I had some problems earlier where the material would shift, uh, which is to say that uh, the different layers would start to, to move around. That's no good. You've got to keep the layers in the same position in the build. Um, if you have a problem with that, real quick fix is to use just a little bit of hairspray. Hairspray will provide just a little bit of cling and keep the uh, layers of envelope of, of the envelope together. Uh, keep them in the same position. Keep them from shifting around, uh, and that can be really helpful to keep the lines nice and clean. Because uh, you know you want your envelope to look good, and that also helps with your aerodynamic uh, uh, drag coefficient. You know, so it goes faster. Um. <clears throat> So yeah, a little hairspray, and then uh, the, when the hairspray dries, you can just rinse it off with a, a damp cloth, and that'll get rid of any residue. Um, and then the other one that I just wanted to tell you real quick is if you want to make it look a little better, uh, something that's very common to do is before you're done sealing everything, you take a, a small piece of the, let's say, you leave a, a seam undone, like maybe, I don't know, this little bit right here. You just leave this much of it undone, turn the whole thing inside out, like a sock. You know, like you can turn a sock inside out. Um, what that'll do is that'll hide all the seams. It'll also make the nose and the tail um, a little cleaner. So when I inflate this, we'll have a little bit of material sticking out of the nose and out of the tail. Um, normally I'll just tape that back, but like I said, if you want it to look real nice, you can turn the whole thing inside out, then you don't see the seams at all, um, and you do have to finish that last bit of seam via some other method. Um, there's a few ways, I'll leave it to your imagination, it's not that difficult. Worst case scenario, you can actually just use a piece of tape. Um, I mean, that's not the best situation, but that's one option. Um, but yeah, 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 turn it inside out and it'll look great. Um, if, if you're going to be, yeah, if you really care about appearance, that might be the way to go. Uh, in theory, it might help your drag coefficient a little bit, but probably not enough to make it worth the effort and not enough for the extra weight because you won't be able to do the last scene naturally, which means it'll weigh a bit more. So yeah, I don't tend to do that. Uh, there's a long, one, <laughs> long story short, I don't tend to do that, but you may want to. Sorry, my computer's being loud. Um, all right, so that's it. So I'm just going to inflate this thing via our fill valve back here. Let me turn off my sound in case it decides to uh, chirp again. Now, again, you'd want to fill this using your air pump, not your breath, normally, because you don't want water vapor in the envelope. But like I say, I just want to get this done. Yeah, not bad at all. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> come back here. Uh, okay, so yeah, there you have it. Um, this thing, if filled with helium, would lift about 40 grams or so, enough for, you know, a decent blip, and it would go pretty fast, because it's very sleek, very aerodynamic. Yeah, I can see a few places where the, where it still needs to be stretched a bit. But yeah, there you go. Anyway, so there you have it. Thanks for watching. Hope you have found this useful. And I hope very much that some of you out there are going to use this to build some awesome blimps and tell me about it in the comments. I want to see your project. And if you can make like a YouTube video or something with it flying, that would be even better. So again, thank you for watching.
<laughs> wow. <laughs>